السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على رسوله الكريم وعلى آله وصحابه أجمعين أما بعد Today's topic and exploration of the Quran we want to look at what the Quran teaches us about beginning with Allah's name and ending with Allah's name we have talked about this topic in the previous few Ramadans but it's a very important topic Allah teaches us the adab of how to begin things and he also teaches us the adab of how to end things so it's very important as believers we do everything under the guidance under the light of guidance and that guidance includes beginning but it also includes ending a lot of us we remember how to begin things but then we forget how we end things that's also equally important as important as how you begin things so in general how do you begin things in Islam what does Islam teaches us how to begin anything as a believer so what's the guidance on that Bismillah good so the beginning is with Allah's name Bismillah literally means with the name of Allah or in the name of Allah whatever you're doing you're beginning with the name of Allah so that's those are words but what does it really mean? Like what is, you know, these are words. Do you think Allah just wants you to begin with certain words without any meaning behind them or without any sentiment behind them? What's really behind Bismillah? What is that mindset? What is the state of the heart? What is it? Tawakkul, good, that's part of it. So, you know, the answer to all these questions are in the Quran. You know, if you look at the verses about fasting. We're in the month of Ramadan, right? That's the most relevant passage for us. What's the first verse about fasting end with? And what's the verse that speaks about our Eid, the end of the passage end with? So what's the first verse of fasting when Allah speaks about fasting? Good? Okay. What does it end with? لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ So that you may attain taqwa. So when Allah speaks about the topic of fasting, which is a huge project, it's an undertaking, it's something you have to plan and you have to do, it has a beginning as an end. So the lesson, the subtle lesson here, the first verse Allah speaks about when He talks about the obligation of fasting, He tells you the purpose. لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ That means fasting begins with taqwa. That means everything begins with taqwa. That's just an example, Allah is speaking about fasting, but the fact is, Everything we do begins with taqwa. And taqwa, how do you remind yourself of taqwa? By mentioning the name of Allah. So that's the connection there. So everything we do begins with taqwa. And bismillah is just a reminder. Like shahada. Shahada has a meaning. Shahada is not really the word saying ashadu Allah. You can go in the streets like some of these street dawah people do. Just get people to repeat the shahada. Sometimes they don't even know what they're saying and they say alhamdulillah, he's Muslim, five minute shahada. Like... Is that really like shahada? Shahada is like a realization that comes from the mind, from research, from thinking. And the words are just an expression of that. But it's not really the words. It's what's behind the words. Same thing, bismillah. It's not really the words. It's not a magical formula. You say bismillah, everything gets okay. No. It's a state behind it. And what's the state behind it? Taqwa. La'allakum tattaqun. Now, in the same verses, let's go back to the passage. When Allah speaks about Eid, what does he say? وَلِتُكْمِلُوا الْعِدَّةِ وَلِتُكَبِّرُوا اللَّهَ عَلَى مَا هَدَاكُمْ What's the end of that? لَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ So the first verse, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ The verse that speaks about Eid and the end of Ramadan, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ What does that mean? Taqwa is how you begin things. And shukr is how you end things. Taqwa is always a state, a mental state, the state of the heart, how we begin things as believers. And shukr is how we end things. So just to complete the idea of taqwa, so what are some of the proofs that you begin with Allah's name in the Quran? So how do you know, okay, we're, we're supposed to begin with Allah's name? Bismillah ar-Rahman. So what are some of the, try to think about verses you know that teach you this idea and concept. Well, the more you think about it, the more deeper it comes in your mind and it settles in your practice. But if you just memorize information without thinking and reflecting, 
then it just has a certain effect. So how do we know you begin with the name of Allah or with the state of taqwa? So I gave you one proof, like the verses of fasting, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ to لَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ And there will be hundreds of verses where you can find this message. But think about some of the verses. What do you know in the Quran where Allah speaks about beginning something or you know some situations? Is there an example in the Quran where someone wrote a letter and it began with something? What's the letter? Okay, whose letter? So give me the details. Yes. Suleiman wrote a letter to Bilqis, the queen of Saba. What did the letter, she told her people about the letter. She, what did she say? Innahu min Sulaymana wa innahu bismillahir rahmanir rahim. This is an example in the Quran of, of the previous prophet. He wrote this letter to the queen of Saba. And she said to her, uh, her subjects, oh, this is a letter I received from Sulaiman, and he begins with the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful. Innahu min Sulaimana wa innahu bismillahir rahmanir rahim. How about the Prophet Nuh? <laughs> what do we know about, is there anything where Allah mentions bismillah in his story? Yes. So wh what, was that, what was that point when Allah says that? What was happening in Nuh's life? No, he wasn't stuck. He was, where was he? Well, he's been a, you know, he's a commander to take his uh, home. Mm -hmm. Yes, so he was on a ship. He was building a ship for years, right? Giving da'wah for 950 years and almost no results. And finally the time came and everything he was building, the 950 years of effort came to fruition when the water began to come and the water began to rise and then the ship finally, ship is there for so long. Finally when the water comes and the promise of Allah is true, the ship begins to rise and begins to move. When the ship begins to move, what does Allah say? وَقَالَ رُكَبُوا فِيهَا بِسْمِ اللَّهِ مَجْرِيهَا وَمُرْسَى Which means, now board the ship, your new phase of your life is beginning. So Nuh in this new phase of his life, this new journey, now with the ship taking them to who knows where, new unchartered territory, this new beginning of Nuh, Allah says, board the ship with the name of Allah. In the name of Allah will be the moving of the ship, in the name of Allah will be the mooring of the ship, the stopping of the ship. Bismillah. So this is the words that are used. So you have Nuh and his new journey. Suleiman writing, you know, his letter. And then in the Quran, how does every surah begin? Bismillah. That's the greatest proof in the Quran. Allah begins every chapter with Bismillah Rahman Rahim. So that's the greatest proof that we begin things with the name of Allah. So this is uh, a great lesson. And if you extend to the Sunnah of the Prophet from the Sunnah, where do we find this idea? Beginning with the name of Allah. There are so many teachings. His letters, yes. So the Prophet's letters himself, Bismillah rahman rahim He used to begin with them. Just like uh, Sulaiman, just like Allah. But specific instruction, what do we teach our children how to eat? What do we say to our children? Say Bismillah. Where do we get that from? Yes, of course, from the Quran. But then there's, there's a hadith of Bukhari and Muslim. Where the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he told the young man, he said, Ya Ghulam. Samillah. Oh young boy, mention the name of Allah. The boy was about to eat, he was teaching him how to eat. Ya Ghulam Samillah wa kul bi yaminik wa kul mimma yalik. He said, Oh young boy, begin with the name of Allah. Mention Allah's name before you eat. Use your right hand when you eat. And eat from the portion that's in front of you. So this is a great lesson. This is one of the strongest hadith from Bukhari and Muslim. The Prophet was teaching a young boy begin eating in the name of Allah. There is uh, another great uh, hadith of Uthman ibn Affan and he said he heard the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say Now this is talking about the beginning of the day and the beginning of the night. So the beginning, again we're talking about beginnings. How do you begin the day? How do you begin the night? 
So the Prophet said, there is no servant who doesn't begin sabahi kulla yawmin, the beginning of his day and the beginning of his night, I mean the evening. What does he say? What is the dua? There's a dua and he says, whoever does this, he will be protected. What is the dua of the beginning of the day and the beginning of the night? Connected to Bismillah. Anyone remember that dua? This is also a sound hadith. Um, Okay, that's from the journeys. So that's the beginning of a journey. That's also good proof. There you go. It's Bismillah illadhi la yadurru ma'asmihi shay'un fil ardi wa la fis samaa wa huwa samiyun alim. We begin with the name of Allah in whose name, through whose name nothing will harm a person. So this is a great hadith of the Prophet wasallam, where he said that the one who does this, um, he has the protection of Allah. But where, does he, where do you say this? Bismillah, beginning of your day and the beginning of your night. Yani Fajr time, when the day begins, and the evening is Maghrib time. That's where the night begins. So you'll find throughout the Quran and throughout the Sunnah this idea. Every beginning for the believer should be with the mindset of taqwa. And, every, and generally that's how it's done, is done by mentioning the name of Allah. So it can be done with Bismillah can be done with Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim and it can be done with Bismillahir Ladhi La Yadurru Ma'asmi Shay. So any type of mentioning the name of Allah, that will suffice. Because the real uh, idea here, the real teaching here is not the words. It's not the words that are that important. It's the meaning behind the words. It's the idea, the state of taqwa. So the idea is, have taqwa. That's why again and again, Allah talks about taqwa. Ittaqullaha haqqa tuqatihi. Ittaqu Allaha wa kulu qawlan sadida. Oh, you believe? If you have taqwa of Allah and then speak the truth and speak straightforwardly. And even when you speak, have taqwa first. It's the same idea. Saying things with bismillah has the same meaning. It means to remind yourself of taqwa. But then sometimes Allah says, have taqwa and do this. So taqwa is the most important lesson for the believer in the beginning of everything that we do. Now, the discussion I wanted to focus on, that's very easy to understand and follow. But what people forget is, just like the beginnings, the ends are also very important. So the endings are la'allakum tashkurun. Everything should end with shukr for the believer. The state of gratitude. So we saw fasting begins with taqwa and ends on the day of our Eid with shukr. La'allakum tashkurun. Um, we also see in many, many proofs in the Quran where the endings generally, when you look at the ending, it's about shukr. So, the endings, in, there's a verse in Surah Al-Ahqaf that speaks about the cycles of life. And it's a very important verse that teaches us what life is. All the, the cycles of life, the ages that people go through. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَوَصَّيْنَا الْإِنسَانَ بِوَالِدَيْهِ إِحْسَانَ We have Treat the parents kindly. Hamalatu ummuhu kurhan wa wada'atu kurha. There were the, your mothers, they bear you, they bore you with great hardship. And then they delivered you with great hardship, reminding us of the cycle of life. Treat your parents kindly because your mothers bore you with so much difficulty. Then Allah says, Wahamluhu wa fisaluhu thalathuna shahara. This whole period of raising a child, weaning the child, breastfeeding the child, is about 30 months. That's how long it takes you know, for a child to be utterly dependent on the mother and the mother then brings them to a state of where that child is now more or less independent. But that 30 months is entirely fully dependent. Hatta idha, and now Allah speaks about, so Allah is addressing us, right? What does he say? Ida balagha ashuddahu. وَبَلَغَ أَرْبَعِينَ سَنَةً Until that child reaches the prime of his or her life and reaches how many years? 40 years of age. So 40 years of age is very significant in Islam. It's like that's the age of the midlife crisis here in America, right? That's everyone goes through that crisis. But it is something real. It has a basis. Allah speaking about the cycle of life, how the, the mothers raise you, then Allah says, all this happens until you reach the prime of your life and you reach 40 years. What happens with the prime of your life? Now you're fully independent. That's a big change in your life, in your lifespan. It's a new journey that begins. Generally, 
doesn't mean it's exactly at 40 for everyone, but generally speaking, that's where the marker between your early life of, of youth and the full adult life begins. That's how old the Prophet was, sallallahu alayhi wa when he received revelation. That's where your life before 40 years is a life of discovery, of possibilities, of dreaming and aspirations. After 40 years, it's about results. Now you can't dream anymore. Now you don't have the luxury to be trying to figure it out. Now you have to live life. Now you're at the prime of your life. You generally have a family. You have children relying on you. Now there's other people relying on you. So a whole different phase of your life begins. So the previous part of your life ends. That's the end of your previous part of your life. So what does Allah say in the verse? حَتَّى إِذَا بَلَغَ أَشُدَّهُ وَبَلَغَ أَرْبَعِينَ سَنَةً What does he say? Yes. أَوْزِعْنِي أَنْ أَشْكُرَ نِعْمَتَكَ الَّتِي So Allah says, when you reach that prime of your life and your previous life ended, that end of your youth, what do you say? قَالَ رَبِّ أَوْزِعْنِي أَنْ أَشْكُرَ نِعْمَتَكَ الَّتِي أَنْ عَمْتَ عَلَيَّ وَعَلَى وَالِدَيْ It's about shukr. Allah says that person should say, My Lord, inspire me to be always grateful to you, to have shukr towards you for all the blessings you gave me and the blessings you blessed my parents with. وَأَنْ أَعْمَلَ صَالِحًا تَرْضَاهُ And inspire me to do good deeds that you will be pleased with. وَأَصْلِحْ لِي فِي ذُرِّيَّتِي and give me, you know, uh, rectify or give me righteous offspring. Inni tubtu ilayka wa inni min al muslimin. I have repented to you and I am among the, those who submit to you. So when you look at this theme in the Quran, anywhere you find an end, an end of a period of your life, an end of a good deed, the end of any journey, the idea and the teaching and the most important obligation in that end would be shukr. Whether it's fasting, whether it's the prime of your life, whether it's victories. When you experience great victories, what happens? If you look at all the great victories experience that Allah relates in the Quran. So for instance, we talked about Suleiman and his letter. Suleiman wrote that letter and he began with Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. But that whole episode with Saba, what happened if you fast forward the whole episode, he, he, he was telling his subjects that there's a rival kingdom, or some of his subjects told him there's a rival kingdom where they're worshipping the sun and he was so surprised how could they worship the sun then he had a plan he said who's going to bring me the kingdom uh, or the throne of Saba and then you know one of the uh, subjects he said I will and then you know and then the, the throne was brought before Saba and then Saba was brought before him and then he talked to her and he gave her da'wah that whole that was kind of like a victory experience and she submitted to uh, to Allah Azza wa Jal, to, to the da'wah, what does Allah say at that moment? قَالَ الَّذِي عِنْدَهُ عِلْمٌ مِنَ الْكِتَابِ أَنَا آتِيكَ بِهِ قَبْلَ أَنْ يَرْتَدَّ إِلَيْكَ تَرْفُكَ This is his subject saying, I will bring the throne to you. And then when, when Suleiman saw the throne before him, that's a victory. A rival kingdom, another queen, they're doing shirk. But now the, the, the symbol of the authority and the power of that rival kingdom is right before Suleiman. That's ultimate victory. فَلَمَّا رَآهُ مُسْتَقِرًا عِنْدَهُ قَالُ When he saw that throne, what did, what did Suleiman say? How did he react? What was his attitude? هَذَا مِنْ فَضْلِ رَبِّي لِيَبْلُوَنِي أَشْكُرُ أَمْ أَكْفُ He said, this is the fadl of Allah Azza wa Jal. The bounty of the blessing of Allah. And he's testing me to see, am I going to be grateful, shukr? Or am I going to be ungrateful, kufr? Shukr or kufr? That's the two options. And the opposite of shukr is actually kufr. So kufr is the opposite of shukr. Shukr is gratitude. Kufr is where you reject Allah's blessings. And that's where kafir comes from. So Suleiman in his moment of victory, he was reminding himself and he expressed these words that this is a moment where Allah is testing us. Are we going to be grateful? Are we going to adopt shukr because this is the end of our victory? Or are we going to choose kufr? If you look at the story of Yusuf, one of the most incredible stories ever told, and Allah relates so beautifully in Surah Yusuf, that whole story, you know, all the stages of Yusuf's life, the conclusion of his story is where everything is concluded. His brothers are before him, his parents are reunited, they bow down in prostration of, of, of gratefulness. What does Yusuf say? Incredible story. And he expresses 
nothing but shukr. That whole passage at the end of Yusuf's victory, where now he has the kingdom at his footsteps, his parents are reunited, incredible, you know, like a hardship that he endured throughout his life, but these are the result. He was nothing for grateful. فَلَمَّا دَخَلُوا عَلَى يُوسُفَ آوَى إِلَيْهِ أَبَوَيْهِ وَقَالَ أَدْخُلُوا مِصْرَ إِن شَاءَ اللَّهُ آمِنِينَ وَرَفَعَ أَبَوَيْهِ عَلَى الْعَرْشِ وَقَرُّوا لَهُ سُجَّدًا وَقَالَ يَا أَبَتِ So now when Yusuf is speaking at that moment, he's saying, يَا أَبَتِ هَذَا تَأْوِيلُ رُؤْيَايَ مِنْ قَبْلُ هَذَا قَدْ جَعْلَهَا رَبِّي حَقَّا This is the dream that I saw and I told you about, the conclusion of that dream. And Allah has brought all of this in truth. وَقَدْ أَحْسَنَ بِي إِذْ أَخْرَجَنِي مِنَ السِّجْنِ وَجَاءَ بِكُمْ مِنَ الْبَدْوِ مِنْ بَعْدِ أَنْ نَزَغَ الشَّيْطَانُ بَيْنِي وَبَيْنَ إِخْوَتِي And then he relates all the stages of his life out of gratitude. Being grateful to Allah. He's the one who took me out of prison, took me out of the well, took me out of all these circumstances. And he keeps going on and on in a, in a, in a narrative that shows supreme gratitude, shukr. إِنَّ رَبِّي لَطِيفٌ لِمَا يَشَاء it's a great passage we should all read to see how you should be in a moment of your victory at the end of any of your projects. But this is an unbelievable teaching. So we begin with taqwa and we end with shukr. That should always be the case. And inshallah, tomorrow we'll continue this topic and we're going to look at in detail لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ How do you do that? By mentioning the name of Allah in various forms. Bismillah, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. لَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ Shukr, how do you express shukr? The most simple form is what, and we'll end with that. Saying, how do you say it in words? Alhamdulillah. Very good. So Alhamdulillah is how you express in the most simple form gratitude, shukr. Tomorrow we're going to look at the exact structure of gratitude in the Quran. It's very fascinating. How do you express gratitude in the most complete way in the Quran? It's so beautiful. It's unbelievable. Alhamdulillah is the, is the most simple way. But then you add things to that. Allah adds things to that. And it makes it much more meaningful, much more complete. So in conclusion, we begin with the name of Allah. We end with the name of Allah. We begin with Bismillah. We end things with Alhamdulillah. Our whole life should be between Bismillah and Alhamdulillah. Our whole life should be between Taqwa and Shukr. And if you have lived a life between these two, Taqwa and Shukr, that's a life of success. May Allah give us tawfiq to live life like this, to, bring, to begin the projects and begin every deed and everything that we do with the name of Allah, to end everything with the name of Allah. Hada wa akhiru da'wana anilhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.